We wanted to welcome everybody to our training this morning or afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, we are really excited for the training we have today. We've got a really, really cool product that we think is extremely unique and offers you as the installing dealer uh, a lot of uh, confidence when you're going to these installs to know exactly what's wrong with the job, uh, how to fix it, all those sorts of things, and we're excited to go through it. Today's training will last about 30 minutes. Uh, we're going to go through, we're going to show you the hardware, what it looks like, the inputs and outputs, and then we're going to jump over to the software, which is where you're going to basically configure the entire system to alert you on what's happening. Today we're going to talk about the Pulse Intel. Pulse Intel is the name of the product, uh, and it is, like I said, probably one of the most unique products that we've shown, and we think that fills a gap in the industry with all of the new UL regulations and UL certifications on gate operators, but then also on uh, garage doors. Um, automatic doors, access control doors, all of these things can be monitored through our system, which we're extremely excited about and think that we're going to offer you some, some really good options for your customers. Something that will allow you as the installer to stand out and offer your customer uh, more confidence on their installs that you'll be the first one there, you'll know before they know, all those sorts of things are the things that this product's going to help you address. So. Let's jump into this. Feel free to ask any questions. We have Melissa over at the computer. She'll read your question uh, out through the mic, and then I'll address it. If I don't know the answer, I'll find the answer or lie, one of the two. I haven't decided today. Uh, but write, write Melissa, so write in the chat box the question that you have. She'll get it, read it, and then we'll, we'll be good to go. Feel free to ask any questions that you have. Whenever you have them, we'll stop and address those questions. Like I said, this is the Pulse Intel. This is the way that it will come to you. Okay, inside the Pulse Intel, you're going to have two manuals. You're going to have the TS Cloud Manual, which tells you all about how to operate the software, our cloud-based software. This is a true cloud-based system, and you'll, you'll see what I mean uh, more about that. But you go to a website, and you can, do, you can manage and configure any device from anywhere that you have internet connection. You do not have to be within range of the device. You can do it from anywhere. So you're going to get the TS Cloud Manual, which shows you, tells you everything you need to know about how to operate the software. And you're going to get the User Manual, which is all about the hardware, how to wire it up, power, all those good things. Okay, So you've got those two manuals. You're going to get your power supply. Okay, We, we send the power supply with it. You're going to get an antenna. Because this is a GSM-based device, and I'll talk about that more, you're going to get an antenna. This is about a five-foot lead antenna. So you'll put the Pulse Intel inside the gate operator or up above the drop ceiling or wherever you're going to put it. And then you can run this uh, antenna, which will get the cell signal wherever you need it to go. You're going to get a door position contact. doesn't have to be used. You can choose to use it if you want to see if the cabinet's been opened, if the gate, uh, uh, if the gate is open or closed. All of those things can be tracked with this door position sensor. And then you're going to get the Pulse Intel. Now, something that is extremely unique and cool about this product is this is the product, okay, the Pulse Intel. This is where you're going to connect your antenna. On the front of it, you're going to see SIM details, so you can see the, the phone number to the SIM card that is already put into the system here, okay, and you have all of that information. This is the size of the unit. You can tell it's extremely small. One of the cool things that you guys need to remember is this has battery backup built in. This device has battery backup built in that will last 18 hours after main power has gone down. Battery backup is built into this with 18 hours uh, power for battery backup that will last if your power goes out. Your SIM card is going to go in here. You have a couple of diagnostic lights, which we'll show you when, we're, when you show the, show the demo. But this is the size of the unit with an 18-hour battery backup which is extremely nice. So if you lose main power, we can alert you to that. We're going to go through all that information. But that is the unit. The, the Pulse Intel is a GSM-based device. It comes with the SIM card preloaded into the device. We have a SIM card in there that's really nice for you. It's going to search between T-Mobile or AT&T, whichever network is stronger. So you can just order. When you order the unit, it comes with the SIM card. You go out there, you Power it on, you install it, and you're done. You don't have to call AT&T, you don't have to call T-Mobile, you don't have to call us. It comes to you ready to go, and the billing doesn't start until there is activity on the system. So if you order a unit from us, and you don't install it for a month, we don't bill you until 
for the SIM card until there is activity logged on the system, which means it's being actively used. So a couple really nice features. This device, and let's, let's jump over to the software real quick, excuse me, the, the manual. On our website, you can go to our products, Pulse Intel, and this is where you can get the downloads. So let me go to the uh, manual here real quick, make sure this is the right one. Yep, this is the user manual. Just give you kind of a better look at how this operates. So you've got your SIM card that's going to go in there with your diagnostic lights. Again, we provide the SIM card. It comes to you with the SIM card in it, ready to go. You just need to power it up. Also, battery backup is in here for 18 hours of, of battery backup. Here's your terminal strips, and we're going to go through these here in just a minute. You have eight inputs. So you've got your main power. The first two inputs are main power, which we provide the power supply for you. You have up to eight inputs, which means you can monitor up to eight different devices. Okay, and I'll, I'll jump into that more when I show you on the demo unit how this works. But you can monitor up to eight different devices. Some examples of what you can monitor. Safety edge open close, photo eye open close, door position, gate position, uh, main power input. So if your power is lost, it will alert you. Uh, I can go on and on and on. If your gate is held open, uh, I, like I said, I could go on and on and on. If someone's broken into the cabinet, but you have up to eight devices that you can monitor. After the eight inputs, you have a four volt reference, which means that we, we look for, you'll see here, between three volts DC low and 28 volts DC high, which means that's what's going to trigger it. So if you have a dry contact that you're using with no voltage, which many applications will be, we've given you two four volt references, which you can force power through the relay so that we can monitor it. And then you have two relay outputs. So you can trigger the gate with this unit by using our two relay outputs. Okay, so up to eight inputs, two four volt references, and two outputs gives you a lot, a lot of functionality to be able to use this with. Okay, Now, what I want to show you is we have a demo unit here that we've set up on this camera. And it's connected to, uh, it's just a demo unit, so we've connected it to these triggers. We've set it on top of a high security gate operator uh, just to kind of mimic how it would work. But again, this will go with any manufacturer that any, it will monitor any gate operator manufacturer's brand. Now, if you're using the LiftMaster or the NICE, which is a pulsed output, their safety devices are pulsed output, we send a module with the device that allows you to then monitor and track systems using a LiftMaster or NICE. But we've tested it on all of them, and it works fantastic. It also works with access control systems, automatic doors, fire alarm systems, all we're looking for is a dry contact output that we're going to put a little bit of voltage through or a, a wet contact with between 3 to 28 volts. Okay, So what we've done is we have in this demo kit the setup of basically how this looks and how it will be installed on a job. You can see we have our terminal strips, we have our main power here, our eight inputs, and then our two outputs to be able to trigger the unit. So when, once you wire this up, and put main power to it, you are now tracking all of your devices and you're able to manage and monitor and configure to be able to track and send you messages for whatever you want. So I'll, I'll jump back to this in just a minute, but let's go ahead and jump into the software. Like I said, this is a cloud-based, true cloud-based system. Because we have the, the SIM card in it, it allows us to connect to the network so that we can connect then to our website. The website, and you'll want to write this down, it's all in the manual, but it's always nice to have it, is tscloud.io. tscloud.io. Okay? That's our website, and it's going to load this page, which you can see down here at the bottom. If you don't have an account, if you're just new to setting up an account, you can click on Create New Account, or if you log in and forgot your password, you can click Forget Password, and it's going to show you uh, it's going to send you an email with how to establish your account or with a new, uh, new password generator. I'm going to go ahead and log into mine, qcofort at transmittersolutions.com, my password. I'm going to log into my account, and now this is giving me a quick look at what I have so far. My account information is right there in the middle, and then off to the left is, would be the, the units that I have. Okay, in my account. You can have as many units as you want 
on your account. Right now I only have one, which I've just titled Demo Case Quinn. Something important to note is that although I am the owner of the unit that I call Demo Case Quinn, I can share this device with up to five different people. Okay, I can share this device with up to five different people uh, so I can, I can be the owner of it and share it with five different people who would also be able to see and configure it from their software here. Now, I've clicked on it and I can get a quick look right now at the information. This is where I can share the device, but I can also see the firmware, the SIM card phone number, the location of the device. All of that is automatically generated when you, when you boot the device up, it will give you the location of it and it's going to plot it on a map. It gives you the phone number, all of this information. Off to the right hand side, I have the status of everything that I'm monitoring on this system that we're talking about. I'm going to go ahead and press connect. Connecting allows me to make and send changes down to the device. The unit will automatically go to sleep until it sees an alert or something that it needs to send to you. If the photo eye has been tripped for a certain amount of time, it's going to send that information to you. But I, ha I do have to connect in order to s make and send changes to the configuration. Now we have five different tabs up at the top here. Info, access, log, map, and settings. I'm going to go through each of these and show you how they work. And again, please stop me with any questions you have. We want to make sure you understand this because this is an extremely, uh, a, a really, really good device to be able to help you on your installs. So I'm going to go ahead and click on access. Access allows me to manage the system, meaning that if I've added Quinn Coford here and my phone number, this now means that I, Quinn Coford, with this number can call the unit and trigger the output number one to open the gate. Okay, So I can call the unit and it will trigger the relay and you can set the relay to toggle or timed. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. You can have up to a thousand different people with the ability to call the unit and trigger the relay. Okay, up to a thousand different people to call the unit and trigger the relay. It's actually 1,024, but I just say 1,000 to make it easy. The way that's done is I would come in here, and I'm going to use uh, BY, who's sitting here with the room with us, as a test here. BY, what's your phone number? He's over there like on his Facebook or something, not even paying attention. 801? 663. Feel free to text or call BY at any time. He doesn't mind. Okay. And now I can click on program. Program means that I can restrict the time that BY is allowed to trigger that relay. So if I come up here to yearly time switch, you'll see I have programmed in right now one time, time switch, which is 24-7, which means any day of the week, even on holidays, whoever is part of the 24-7 group can trigger that relay. I trust BY, I probably shouldn't, but I do. And so I'm going to make BY program 1, which you can see here is program 1, which means BY can call that number and trigger the relay at any time, any time of the day. I'm going to go ahead and click add to list. And now he can call that after I click save and trigger that relay. Now, if I was to make a new program or a new time switch at number 2 that restricted it to, let's say, office hours, 9 to 5 or whatever it is, then BY, even if he called the unit at 8 in the morning because he showed up to the office early, the, the relay would not switch, off, switch on because he doesn't have access rights in that time. Again, uh, again up to 1,024 people can be in this to be able to manage and, and track it. Now if I click SMS, SMS would allow for BY then to get a diagnos diagnostic of all of my devices that I'm monitoring by sending a question mark to the phone number. I'm going to show you how that works right here. We're going to switch cameras. I didn't make BY an SMS administrator, but I made myself. So I'm going to go ahead and log into my, uh, my text message. I'm, I am an administrator, so I can do it. You, you, I don't know if you can see here. It's a little bit blurry. But I'm going to text question mark to the phone number of the SMS SIM card that's in there. So I text the question mark, and it's going to return to me matter of about 10 seconds. Okay. Counting, counting. It will text me back with this information that you see here. Though. So there it comes. So basically 
What it says, I'll read it to you if you can't read it, it says photo eye open is okay, photo eye closed is okay, the safety loop is okay, the open loop is okay, safety edge okay, and relay one is off, relay two is off. It gives me a quick breakdown just by texting a question mark to it exactly what's going on with that gate. So now I can call it and trigger the relay. I can also text it because I put SMS on my profile, not BY's, and get a quick view without having to log into the software of what's going on with that exact gate. Really, really cool feature that allows you to see uh, in an instant what's going on with that gate. So let's go ahead and jump back to the software. So again, this screen allows you to give people admin rights to be able to text and see what's going on with the unit, or just make people uh, a profile to be able to trigger the relay uh, or open and close the gate, door, whatever it may be during certain times that are restricted by your yearly time switch. Any questions on that? I think this is a, a really, really nice feature. It's an upsell for sure because it's a, it's a way into the gate. Maybe if they lost their transmitter or something and you add them as a someone who, a profile that can open it, and you can restrict access, which is really nice and, and pretty hard to find on, on uh, access control devices, quote unquote, that would fall into this price range. So please let me know if you have any questions on that. Now, if I click on call log, which is a sub menu here, I can see everything that's happened. So you can see that I've triggered this gate. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna go ahead and call the, the gate again, and I wanna show you something kind of unique. So I'm going to call the gate again, and I'll have you stay on that camera right now, Melissa, until I call. I, all I've done is called the gate. It will ring once and then hang up. Okay. My service in here is not that great through T-Mobile. Okay. It rang once and hung up, and you'll be able to see that if I click refresh, it's going to read device, it's going to go out and retrieve that, that Quinn Wilford made a call to that gate and triggered the relay on May 4th at 1916, okay? So, and you'll be able to see when I come back in, and now Melissa will jump over to this camera, I'm going to text a question mark to that because I know I just called the gate, but I can't remember if I left that gate open or closed when I left the house or whatever I did. It's going to come back with a text message. Sorry, I'll try to make this a little more clear for you. Is that good? It's going to come back. It's going to tell me the status of all my devices is OK. But you'll notice that my relay 1 is on. Because I called it and I have that relay set to toggle, my relay 1 is on, so that gate is probably open. Okay. And again, if I had all this configured correctly, it would be if I had an input triggered on a real gate, it would say, hey, Quinn, you left your gate open. It would have alerted me long before sending that text message. This is just a quick way to see it, okay? So some really cool features. The log allows you to see exactly who's called the unit at, at what time and what date. Again, let me know any questions you have on that. So that is the access tab. The log tab is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll show it to you anyway. The log tab gives you a, an event of every single thing that has happened on this device. And this will fill up, and I'll show it to you again at the end as we start triggering and, and mimicking uh, false reads, or as we start triggering safety edges held open, photo eyes held open. I'll show you this too in just a minute. But you can see right now that my relay one is on. My relay is held open, and I will get a text message after a certain amount of time that I've set, which you'll see here in just a minute, that would alert me of that. So, the purpose of this is to, so that your customer, before they even call you, you're getting a text, me text message saying, hey, I noticed your gate's stuck open. I know exactly what it is, and I'll show you how that comes into play. But this log, what this log will be used for, for is when your customer calls you and says, hey, uh, installer, my, my gate keeps randomly opening in the middle of the night, or my gate won't close at certain times of the day, or my door I swear it was held open when I got into the office, or I swear it was unlocked when I got into the office, or my garage door keeps opening and closing at random times. You can now come in here because what happens is, we all know it, you go out to the job site and you start looking around and you can't find anything wrong and you can't duplicate the error. And then you leave and a day later your phone rings, it's the same customer saying their gate got stuck open again or their door was held open again. You can come into this log and you can say, nope, you want to know what, what? you're right. At 9.25, the open photo eye had an issue. At 9.25 and 12 seconds, and 9.13 and 12 seconds, there was a problem. There was also a problem with the safety loop and the safety edge 
and your cabinet was open. So someone's getting in there messing around with it, but you can show them exactly, or you can say, no, you want to know what? There has not been any issues since, the, since I last came back. Everything has been okay, and I can show you that. But you can quickly diagnose and should see what we like to call ghost opens or ghost closes. You can see if it actually, in fact, happened and show your customer live the exact date and time that it did happen or didn't happen. Now, when you're troubleshooting, you can also click on live log, which allows you to see in the moment exactly what's happening as you're troubleshooting the gate. Again, the log, I think, in my personal opinion, the log is one of the most powerful tools here because you never know what really happened when you're not there. All you know is your customer's upset and you need to go find out if in fact their gate did trigger open three times or hold open for five hours like they're claiming. You could come in and say, nope, you wanna know what? Uh, yeah, it opened at 925 randomly, but at 941 it fixed itself. So I know as the installer I need to dive in and find out what happened, but I also know it was only open for 15 minutes. Okay, so again, the log is an extremely powerful tool. The map, is again, it's, it's a cool feature. The map will plot all of your devices on it. So we took this to Vegas and it plotted it in Las Vegas. It's the Sands Expo Center, but it would plot all of your installs on a map so you can quickly get a glimpse of where they are. And again, this would not be named Demo Case Quinn. This would be called the ABC Apartments or Jones Family or, or whatever it may be so you can quickly see what's going on. Now, let's get into the really cool features of how this is gonna save you a ton of time, money, hassle, headache, you name it, this device is gonna help you. It's probably gonna make you cooler in a lot of ways. It's made me cooler in a lot of ways. I have more friends ever since I started training on this product. What this, the inputs, we'll start with the inputs. The inputs are all of the devices that you're monitoring, okay? So you can see that I have labeled these photo I open, photo I closed, safety loop, open loop, safety edge, open, you can see what I've labeled all of these. Okay, I can change these under headings to whatever I want. So let's say I'm not doing a gate, I'm doing a door. And you want to say, uh, I don't know what, door status. You can change it to that, sorry. I'm, I may have a lot of friends, but I don't know how to spell. Door status. Okay, you could change it to that, or I, I want to keep it what I had it, just for purposes of this training. Photo eye open, this is the open photo eye. Once again, I can't spell. Photo eye, and you can change all of these. You have total control to change any of these that you want to whatever you want. We don't care what you name them. As well as power supply, so we're monitoring the power supply and we're tracking if you've lost power or not to your device. And then we will, be, because the battery backup is built in, if the main device that it's powered off of loses power, our system will still work up to 18 hours to alert you of any faults that you have. So let's say the power supply goes down on your gate operator. I'm going to continue to use the gate operator example. Main power goes down. You lose 110. And our system automatically kicks into battery backup and is going to alert you. Hey, your main power is down at ABC Apartments, or in this case, Demo Case Quinn. And then when power is restored, if power is restored faster than you can get out there, it's going to send you another text message that says, hey, your power's okay. Don't worry about it. Power's fixed. And what happens is then our battery backup shuts off. We go back into hardwire power, and our battery backup is recharged through the main power. Okay? But you can name all of these whatever you want. And then you're going to set the value. This is what's going to show up on this. So whenever there's a problem, if the value is high, meaning the voltage gets too high or the voltage gets too low, you can say, and you can name this whatever you want, problem or affected or run for your life. It doesn't really matter. You can set it to whatever you want and that's what's going to show up here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it run for your life so you guys can see how this works. And I'm going to click save. Again, you always save everything you want. But now I'm monitoring all of these devices, okay? So I've set up all of my inputs. Eight inputs I've set up and I've wired them into the gate. My power supply is being monitored. My two relay outputs are being monitored. And then my counter, which I'll show you here in just a minute, is being monitored, okay? I'm gonna come back to inputs. Now that I've set all my headings, I'm gonna come back to inputs. And this is where I can set my filter time. Filter time means we, don't, we do not want this device to text us. That is the goal. If, if we get an alert, 
from the Pulse Intel, that's not a good thing because that means there's probably something wrong with the gate operator. It's a good thing in the sense that you will know about it before your customer does and you'll know exactly what's wrong so you don't have to go out there and troubleshoot for hours. You can go right in and see what the problem is. But if you're getting a lot of text messages, that's a problem because it means the gate's having a lot of problems. So the filter time says, I don't want to know about this. I don't want to know that the photo eye is open every two seconds. I want to know if the photo eye has been held open for 10 seconds. And again, 10 seconds is even really short. I would suggest setting it to like 10 minutes. Okay? Filter time goes in seconds. But you're going to want to set it 10 minutes because you don't want to know that the open photo eye is holding that gate open until after about 10 minutes because it's, of course it's going to open and close for seconds at a time, 60 seconds, maybe even minutes sometimes. And you don't want to know about those because that's the normal operation of a gate and of a photo eye as a car drives by. You do want to know though if after 10 minutes that that photo eye is still open. That's then a problem. Okay, so this filter time is in seconds and it tells you after X amount of time, I've set my photo eye open to 10 seconds, all the rest of 5 seconds, which again are way too low. I'm just showing you for demonstration purposes. After that filter time, then it will send you a message, text message to your phone to tell you exactly what's wrong and when it's been fixed. Okay? Now the program for SMS blocking, this goes back to our yearly counter, yearly time switch. This means I do not need to know because I know that my property has their gate held open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day. And I do not want to be alerted because I know the gate's supposed to be open. You could say, okay then, I don't want text messages during my yearly time switch number two, which is eight to five. Do not alert me at, on, about anything between eight and five p.m. because I know that gate is supposed to be held open. But you can set it to different things. So I don't want to know if the photo eye is held. I don't want to know if the photo eye is closed between eight and five. But I do want to know, and so you'd leave it none, I do want to know if someone has opened the cabinet. And again, you can modify these to whatever you want because no one should ever be in the cabinet, not even between 8 and 5. And I do want to know if we lose power between those times. But these guys right here, I don't care about. My safety devices, I don't care about because I expect them to be tripped because the gate is held open. Okay? So I don't want to know about any of these things. So now that I've set these to program 2 between 8 and 5 p.m. on Monday through Friday, which is when I know the gate is supposed to be open, it's not going to alert me to any of these. After 5 p.m. and before 8, it will. And that's when you could have a problem. But I do want to know every time during the day that if the cabinet's been opened and if I lose main power. Again, a really, really cool feature. You can filter all of this. Okay? Now that we've filtered, and I'm going to go ahead and change these back just for the demo that I'm going to show you guys. Now that we've filtered, we can set our text messages. We're not one of those systems that gives you weird, random text messages that no one can make sense of. Here's how ours work. I'm going to click on Edit Messages. And I'm going to say, if my edge triggers high, I put the, the note, run for your life, if you guys remember. You would probably put something like problem. If it triggers high or problem or run for your life for 10 minutes, my filter time, you're going to get a text message. And the message, you can edit to say whatever you want. I could say, open photo eye blocked, run for your life. Let's do open photo eye blocked. ABC Apartments. And you would know already who it is because it would show up from the SIM card that's on the ABC Apartments job, and I want it to text to this number. Okay? Now, what I also want to do is I want to know if it's been fixed. So if it goes into an OK state, which means the photo eye is unblocked or the safety head is unblocked or power restores, then I'm going to put open photo eye. fixed. ABC Apartments. And I'm going to text it to a certain number. Okay, and I'm going to change this to my number as well. Okay, 
So now what's that saying is it's going to alert me after my filter time or X amount of time that the, the photo eye has been broken. It's going to give, send me this message right here, open photo eye blocked apartment complex. Then when it's been fixed, it's going to say open photo eye fixed ABC apartment complex. I can do up to eight different messages to eight different numbers for every single input and output. You can see I just did my photo eye open. I can do photo eye close, loop. You can edit these to your heart's content to send you whatever you want so it's a system that actually makes sense. It's not going to send you a random text message strand that says uh, whatever it says, uh, you know, and you have to go through the, the manual to find out what it means. It's not like that. This is going to send you whatever you want it to. I'm going to show you how it works. And I just realized I forgot to put a one right here. So you could have this alert you, your customer, your tech, uh, whoever you want. But I'm telling you right now, when you put these on jobs and you call your customer and say, Hey, you know what? I just noticed your gate stuck open. I know the exact problem. Your, your open photo eye is holding your gate open. Do me a favor. Walk, walk out there and just wipe off the lens if you know if it's been raining. Or, hey, I know exactly what's wrong. It's the safety edge. You're going to call your tech. Hey, tech, uh, you need to go to ABC Apartments. Their open safety edge is stuck open and having an issue. Rather than sending your tech and saying, hey, I, the gate's stuck open. The customer just called me, but I have no idea what's wrong. Go spend hours troubleshooting. This tells you exactly what's wrong, okay? And again, you're only alerted when, during the times you want to be alerted, and the, met, the exact messages you want it to, to say. So on the, on the power supply, you do main power is gone, main power out. When it's fixed, main, main power restored. Anything you want for all of your eight inputs, two outputs, uh, which is really nice. Now you can see I have a quick view of all of my devices over here, okay? We'll get to that. Now my outputs. Outputs is where you can come in and I, I, like I said, I have Relay 1 toggled. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call the device and turn that off because you can see right here that my Relay 1 is on. I'm going to call it with my phone again because I've set myself up to be able to do that and I'm going to turn that Relay off. But you can untoggle it and you can set a time that will say I want that Relay to hold for 10 seconds. Now that Relay is going to hold for 10 seconds. And then after 10 seconds, it was automatically closed. You can see that I just turned off my relay now just by calling it, and it updated instantly. Okay? Now, that's for the call time. The cloud time is managed by these two buttons. Directly from this software, I can trigger these relays. And again, I can say, oh, I, if, I, if I trigger it from my cloud, from my software, I want it to toggle. Or no, I don't want it to toggle. If I trigger it from my cloud, I want it to hold for 10 seconds. Okay? Or you can set your seven-day timer and say, I want Relay 2 to be, sorry, my mouse is going all goofy. I want Relay 2 to open the gate according to yearly time schedule number 2, which as we know from previous examples we've shown is open the gate at 8, close the gate at 5, and I, can name, I could name this Relay 2 timer under my heading section so that I could have more accurate information. So I'm going to save this. And now what I've done is my Relay 1, if I call it from a phone that I've set up under the access rights, will hold open for 10 seconds and close. If I open it from my Relay 1 here button on my screen, it will hold for 10 seconds. There's no time schedule, but my second output, all I'm doing is triggering it to toggle uh, and open at 8 and close at 5 according to yearly time schedule number 2. Okay? I'm going to go into my headings and just relabel this just so when we're looking at the reports. You guys can see what I'm talking about. So instead of calling it Relay 2, I'm going to call it uh, Automatic Open slash Close. And it'll go through, and I'm going to save that. Okay. I'll save that information, and now I'll be able to track a little bit better what's going on. I actually am probably going to change this to, to Problem. So it makes more sense in our reporting. So again, total customization. You can edit and customize anything you want. Pretty sure my mouse is running out of batteries. OK, so now we've set that up. Now the counter is another really cool section. The counter allows you to be alerted when the gate needs service, which you can set to be uh, a countdown. So count and let me know after a 1,000 cycles of that gate, I want to be alerted so I can go uh, and service it. 
but you can see, and then you click Service Done, and it will reset everything and start all over. So when you go out in Service Gate, you click Service Done, it'll reset everything. This is just a nice feature to be able to keep track of how many cycles, openings, closings, and just tell your customer, hey, look, I can see how many times your gate's open and closed. I recommend doing it every three months or every X amount of openings. I'm tracking that, and I will be alerted as soon as either the three months or X amount of openings happens, and I will be here to service your gate when it's done. When, it, when your service is done, you click Service Done, it resets, and it becomes almost like an oil change for the gate. You're monitoring and tracking and being alerted via text message through the service number here. If I put myself, it would alert me as soon as my parameters have reached. Quinn, you need to go service ABC Apartments. It's met its 3,000 cycles or three-month period or whatever it is. And just a really nice feature to keep you ahead of your competition and to keep you in with that customer in their good graces. Okay? And then the yearly time switch. Again, the yearly time switch is just where you can go in and set up to five different t schedules. You can see each of them have different intervals. But you have up to five different schedules you can set. Also holidays, okay? Holidays and schedules. So a very, very cool system. So now let's show you this in action. So I'm going to come here to inputs, and I want to show you this in action. So what we're going to do is I'm going to keep you on this screen. But the demo unit that I showed you earlier, I'm going to go ahead and mimic a couple things. So I'm going to trigger some of these on my demo unit. And the filter time is now counting down because I've triggered a couple of these. You're going to see that my safety loop has a problem, my safety edge has a problem, and my cabinet is open. Okay? All of those are what I've triggered. So what just happened is, and my open photo I had the problem. I triggered those four units. Now what you'll see is, and I'll have Melissa switch back to this screen, because I set my filter time to 10 seconds, after there's a problem with it for 10 seconds, with that certain one, super blurry, sorry, I'll just read it to you. It says, open photo eye blocked ABC apartments. I got that because the open photo eye set a filter time of 10 seconds. The rest of them I didn't. Okay, so I now know, we'll go back to, this, to the computer screen, that my photo eye open has a problem, my safety loop has a problem, my safety edge has a problem, and the cabinet's been opened. That's a problem. There's a lot of stuff going wrong with that gate, but I've just been alerted. Now, say you're about to call your tech, and tell them, hey, you need to get out to this gate because I just got an alert that that photo I opens having a problem. But it fixes itself. So you'll see here on the screen, everything's going to fix itself because I've just done that. And now the filter time has started because it has a change of state. My photo I open is not yet fixed. It will be here in just a second. And it's fixed, and my filter time passed, and so I just got the text message. I don't need to show it to you. I just got the text message that says, Open photo I fixed at ABC Apartments. So I'm going, okay, I don't need to go out of that job, but I do need to keep my eye on that photo I because that's going to be a little bit worried. And if it happened again, it would alert you again and again to all of the devices that you're monitoring or the outputs or whatever it is. So you can see the benefit of this system in your installations. Okay? So the reason I'm so excited about this and we're excited about this here is because the price point on it is extremely competitive. It's really, really good. There really is nothing out there like it. We will work with all brands of operators. All we're doing is monitoring relays. That's it. So we'll work with pretty much any system. It's extremely easy to configure. As you can see, we spent about 30 minutes going through it. And it's totally customizable. It's not, like I said, one of the problems with some of these systems out there are if it's a GSM system, you can get a weird strand of text messages that you then have to go to the manual to decipher what it says. This, you customize exactly what you want it to say so you know exactly what's wrong with the exact gate, what time, all of those things. Let me show you one more thing, which I told you I'd show you. I'm going to go to the log real quick because your customer just called you saying all this stuff was happening. And you'll be able to see when I reload it, all of those things that were having issues on the exact time and what was wrong. Okay, so just a nice, really nice clean look at it. So again, this is called the Pulse Intel. We have them in inventory, ready to sell. Battery backup built into this little unit right here uh, with the ability to uh, customize and change everything. We do not charge for the cloud-based software, okay? That's one of the big benefits of this. We charge a small monthly fee for the SIM card, which 
I would recommend just doing yearly. It's really nothing when you hear the number, and again, we don't talk pricing on these webinars. When you hear the number, you'll be blown away how inexpensive the unit is and how inexpensive the monthly charge is. But the power this thing gives you as a gate installer, especially gate, door, whatever it is, especially with all these new regulations, should make you be calling us right now because you can monitor everything and know everything that's wrong with your systems uh, and know before your customer does and know if there is actually a problem. Uh, again, for all of you that joined in our webinar, we have 15% discount for all orders placed uh, on the Pulse Intel unit. So I'd get your hands on those. I can't remember what it was, the first ones or first 50? The first 50, okay. Uh, I can promise you those will go fast. So get, get in, get one ordered even just to test it and mess around with Again, we do not start billing you the SIM card fee until there's activity on the SIM card, which is really nice. So any questions that we have? Any questions at all? If we haven't got any, which means either you couldn't hear me, I'm really good at what I do, or I'm really bad at what I do. It wouldn't be bad because then you'd have a lot of questions. I'm just going to go with the I'm really good at what I do. Okay, we'll stick around. Thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. We've got some really cool other stuff coming here soon, so keep, keep up to date with our emails. But we'll stick around. Please let us know any questions you have. We'll get them answered. Thanks, guys.